Hello, my name is Giovanni Guizzo, I'm a research fellow at University College London, and today I'm going to present to you the paper Enhancing Genetic Improvement of Software with Regression Test Selection. This is a paper I wrote with Dr. Justina Petk, Professor Federica Saro, and Professor Mark Harmon from our group, Solar. For those of you who don't know, I'll briefly introduce the concept of genetic improvement, or GI for short. GI aims at getting an existing software and automatically modifying it to improve a given software property. This property can be functional or non-functional. For example, in automated software repair, a type of functional improvement, we get a failing software and try to generate bug-fixing patches. In non-functional improvement, on the other hand, we aim at improving properties such as runtime, memory consumption, and energy consumption. For that, we represent the software into a genetic representation and apply modifications to this representation. For instance, we can represent it as a tree or a list of statements or line. Then we can delete statements, swap lines, copy blocks of codes, and so on. J works over many iterations, generating one software variant at a time. The idea is that the variants will maintain the desired behavior of the software while improving the target property. To check whether it occurs, we use the test suite as an oracle. Hence, each generated variant is tested against the test suite. However, as one can imagine, running each software variant against potentially thousands of test cases incurs a great computational cost. One way of solving this problem is to select only relevant test cases as opposed to using the full test suite. This can be done with the usage of regression test selection, or RTS for short. Usually, RTS techniques search for the test cases that cover the changed piece of code, be it with dynamic or static analysis. The idea behind RTS is that by using fewer test cases, the testing phase will execute faster, thus reducing the need of computational resources. We hypothesize that RTS techniques can and should be used as a core component of GI in order to reduce its cost. Prior work has shown the benefits of RTS in many contexts, but never for non-functional property improvement. In this context, different and unseen challenges arise. For instance, by speeding up the process of runtime improvement, the search itself is impacted because the runtime is precisely what guides the search. So, the main objective of this work is to investigate the impact of RTS on the effectiveness of GI for non-functional improvement, the magnitude of the efficiency gain when RTS is active, and the trade-off between effectiveness and efficiency in various application scenarios. We designed three research questions to evaluate our, our hypothesis. Research question number one focuses on analyzing whether RTS techniques are safe and whether they impact the final results of GI. RQ2 focuses on unveiling the efficiency gains obtained by using RTS with GI. And finally, RQ3 concerns whether different RTS techniques offer different trade-offs between efficiency and effectiveness in different GI application scenarios. For our experiment, we use Gene an open-source GI tool for Java programs. It offers both functional and non-functional optimization algorithms. We also use 7 reward software from the Apache Common Suite, and we compare the results with the usage of four different techniques, GI with no RTS, GI with a random RTS, just for a sanity check, GI with ecstasy, ecstasy is a dynamic analysis RTS technique, and GI with starts, starts is a static analysis RTS technique. Well, in our experimental procedure, the first step is to run the profiling procedure of each strategy. In the profiling phase, Gene gathers hotspots in the code so that it can focus the optimization on, on, of specific hot methods. This is where the selection is done. Without RTS, Gene will simply assign all test cases to all profiled methods. On the other hand, when using an RTS technique, the respective, the respective RTS technique will decide which test cases should be executed to test each profiled method. This information is stored and only a subset of test cases is executed in the set phase, which consists of the actual execution of the GI optimization process. We start execution time for both profiling and execution phases. The results of the GI execution is a set of optimized software variants. 
However, these variants are only tested against a subset of test cases, meaning that the RTS technique might have, might have missed some important test cases that could reveal a bug. Hence, in the third phase, we execute the whole test suite against the software variants to det determine whether this actually occurs. In other words, we want to know whether the software variants would fail if the tests, um, if the tests, the whole test suite is used and no RTS was used. In the end, we compute the results in matters of effectiveness and efficiency gains. Okay, so answering research question number one about safety, we found out that it is almost 100% safe to use RTS techniques with GI. Out of 280 patches generated with this two, the, the two state-of-the-art techniques, only one patch failed the full test suit. Moreover, we also found out that the relative change in improvement, in other words, the quality of the solutions, improved with RTS by up to 5.81 times. On average, GI with RTS provided from 2.2 to 2.5 times better improvement with large effect sizes in 86% of the cases. Now, for the efficiency gain, we found out that RTS was able to reduce the cost of GI up to 68%. What we're seeing here is the relative cost of the GI process. For 86% of the programs using either Xs or Starts, we can obtain statistically significant savings with large effect sizes. This box plot shows the cost of each strategy over 20 runs. The red line represents the regional cost. Any value above this line means that the cost of this strategy is higher than using no strategy at all, whereas values under this line represent cost savings. In summary, GI with ecstasy costs on average only 79% of the original cost, a reduction in 21% in running time, whereas Starts was able to reduce it by 22. This figure shows the cumulative cost of our experiments in hours of running time. In our specific case, GI without RTS used over 180 CPU hours to complete the experiments. For the same experiments, this time was reduced to 114 and 118 when using Ecstasy or Starts respectively. This is an average reduction of 64 hours of computational time, two days and a half. This is more than a third of savings when compared to the total cost of GI without RTS. To answer our Q3, we evaluated three GI application scenarios. The first scenario, the engineer is concerned in finding the perfect improvement. In other words, the best improvement possible in seconds. In this case, using Ecstasy provides the greatest runtime improvement for 4 out of 7 programs, whereas Starts yields the best results for 3 out of 5. The second scenario is when the engineer wants to find a valid patch with a positive improvement as fast as possible. What you're seeing here is the median execution time in seconds before the GI process can find an improving and valid patch. In this scenario, Starts and Ecstasy showed similar results, but Starts was a bit faster. The last scenario concerns the diversity of patches. We want to know which strategy provides more valid improving patches. In this case, Ecstasy showed the best results for 5 out of 7 programs. All in all, in most of the cases considered, 19 out of 21 comparisons, using GI with RTS provides better results than traditional GI without RTS. You can find more and better patches and considerably quicker than GI without RTS. So, the takeaway message here is, use RTS techniques in test-based automated improvement of software for significant efficiency gain with no negative impact on the results. This concludes my talk. Thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, please do not hesitate in contacting me. Cheers. Hi everyone, welcome to this uh, third Q&A session. Uh, we have now a technical track paper on enhancing genetic improvement of software with regression test selection. We have the pleasure of having Giovanni Gizzo joining us from Brazil and Mark Harman joining us from London, I believe. Um, so yes, please start posting your questions on the chat and I'm sure they will be happy to answer them. 
um, while questions come up, perhaps I can ask a, a very open one. Uh, from the software engineering point of view, what are the implications of this uh, of this work that you have done? So I, I can see that you've integrated this very cool uh, ecstasy technique, for example, uh, with G, with uh, GI. Uh, as a software engineer, how can I benefit from from all this uh, effort that you've put into this work? Everyone, and thanks for the question, Jose. Um, well, basically, by improving the speed of genetic improvement uh, with regression test selection, perhaps we can make it more practical. Uh, Non-functional improvement of software is still in its early days, let's say, uh, compared to the rest of software engineering. So if we can make it uh, faster to execute, cheaper, and let's say more accessible, maybe we can start using it in practice, perhaps creating a way of uh, implementing uh, genetic improvement of non-functional properties in continuous integration or uh, some other, uh, in some other places uh, during the development. So the idea is to, the, the main idea is to make it practical, definitely. Um, of course, the, the other big area here is the test case prioritization. Mm -hmm. uh, would there would there be any benefit any benefit in, in using prioritization as well to oh, yeah. help with GI? Great question. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if we we haven't tried using prioritization, there are some works that use some types of prioritization of test cases, especially during uh, automatic program repair, because if you if you select test cases that are more prone to fail, then perhaps you can fail fast and not wasting time with irrelevant test cases. And, and then you fail fast and you go to the next patch and then you can try to um, find an, a better solution and so on. So yeah, I think, I think those techniques, those very conventional techniques from software engineering, uh, prioritization of test cases, selection of test cases, test suite minimization uh, can always be used with AI algorithms such as GI to improve how they work. I mean, we've been using AI for software engineering for a long time now, and we should start using more software engineering for AI. Um, how, how do you envision that this, uh, this could work? So for example, if you have a machine learning based system, uh, what kind of genetic op genetic improvement operators we could use there? Mm, interesting. Uh, I haven't tried. Uh, I think I think uh, one of our, of our colleagues, uh, Bill uh, Bill Langdon, he actually used GI to improve GI, and okay. it worked pretty well. Uh, I, I I think this is this is the paper he used on GP actually. And it worked pretty well. I remember that paper. And I mean, uh, AI algorithms are also software. So I believe that although a bit trickier, it's still possible. But perhaps I have to say I raise my hands here because I'm not not a, an mm -hmm. AI expert in, in any any form of shape. Um, but I, I, perhaps the challenge there is that a lot of it relies on an underlying model. You don't really have a code structures as such that you yeah. can that you can mutate or where you can apply mm -hmm. genetic uh, genetic improvement operators. So, mm -hmm. what what do genetic improvement operators could look like for this type of models? I think that's, that's perhaps one of the pressing questions. Right? I see. Yeah. Well. I would say uh, instead of changing, perhaps instead of changing the, the code of the machine learners, we could change the models directly. And, and then um, apply some, time of met, uh, some kind of metamorphic testing to check whether the, those changes in the model change the results. Uh, we have we have a few good researchers in our group at UCL who are working on testing for uh, software, uh, for machine learning. Sorry, uh, Professor Mark Harmon, um, uh, G, uh, G is an also are working with papers on such, and they're creating new ways of testing 
uh, those models and those algorithms. Because, well, when you apply uh, a change, a genetic operator, to those uh, programs, it's kind of hard to test them if the output is correct or not, because you have like accuracies, and if you change 1% in accuracy, is it incorrect or is it correct? If you label a different class, uh, it might be correct or it might be incorrect. So how can you test this? So I, I would say the first step towards improving would be uh, finding uh, better ways of testing those changes. And then uh, we, could, we could extrapolate from that. Well, that, that, that that's a very nice idea yeah yeah um i i i have i have to say i've done a terrible job as a session manager because i, I haven't managed to get people to ask questions um <laughs> that's all right but um but yes um, so one of the things that you you mentioned in your your paper in passing because i suppose you were running out of uh, out of space is other test selection strategies could be could be explored uh, what other test selection strategies would you mm -hmm. be able to apply? Yeah, well, uh, good question, yeah. I mean, we only use one dynamic analysis and one static analysis um, tool, so two tools in total. And we also use random selection, which is just for some checking. But, uh, and, I mean, we could use machine learning based selection, uh, which is also a thing. And um, to be quite honest, uh, those those test selection techniques are the state of the art. So um, although I, I try to find other techniques, um, they always came back to ecstasy and starts for uh, static analysis. So perhaps uh, some techniques. Um, I'm, I'm definitely going to try machine learning selection, so, yeah. Then that wouldn't you lose on efficiency there? Uh, would, would it oh. have become prohibitively expensive to integrate that into GI? Yeah, perhaps, because uh, the dynamic and static analysis are, are, pretty, are pretty fast to execute, as you saw, uh, the overhead is minimal. I think we have some questions there. Yes, we have two questions that have just popped up. Um, we have one minute to to answer them. So mm -hmm. the first one is but by James. Do you know anything about the size of tests that were selected? Um, yeah, good question, James. It's usually we, we found out some uh, through some qualitative analysis that it's usually not about the size of the tests, but how much they test and which modules they test. So if a test case tests a module that is um, a module that's used across the software, then these tests are very expensive. And uh, we have some big tests, like multiple lines of code that um, do not impact so much in, on the cost. And uh, I would say that the characteristics of the software that's being tested is more important than the size of the tests. And What is the rough percentage of tests that Ecstasy would select in each iteration? Um, good question as well. Uh, so it depends. It depends on the software. As I said, some in some cases we improved some methods that are used across the entire software. So in this case, almost all test cases are needed, and then Ecstasy would select like ninety percent, ninety-five percent of the tests. But in some cases, it tests a, a very specific corner, so only 5%. Giovanni, we have 10 seconds, so please follow up in the discussion forum because... Uh